Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Almost always in patients with glioblastoma, the glioblastoma eventually recurs. Many times this is within the first six to 12 months after the patient has finished their radiation and uh, temozolomide. When a patient comes back with recurrent glioblastoma, the question that comes to the multidisciplinary team of the radiation oncologist, the neuro or medical oncologist, and the surgeon is first, is further surgery warranted? And when we, look at, when we look at this, we usually look at it together as a team, and we ask the same questions that we do as the questions we have with a newly diagnosed patient. You know, how much disease is there? How much mass effect and swelling do we have? And certainly if there's a large tumor bulk with mass effect and swelling, and the patient is a good Karnofsky performance and doing well, a second surgery is often warranted. If there's only a small amount of disease without mass effect, there's no question about the diagnosis, then we usually bypass surgery at that time. Other reasons to contemplate repeat surgery are if there are clinical trials that need tissue, such as a, a vaccine trial they might be eligible for, that pushes us a little bit more towards surgery. In those cases in which the tumor burden is very small and there's minimal or no mass effect and there are no seizures that are difficult to control, we usually move on to a second line chemotherapy and sometimes consider um, additional radiotherapy. Bevacizumab is a recombinant monoclonal humanized antibody that is often used in patients with glioblastoma. The drug was given accelerated FDA approval in 2009 and is often employed in patients with recurrent disease. In addition, it has been studied in the upfront setting in these patients as well. In many trials, bevacizumab has been given as 10 milligrams per kilogram dosing every two weeks, and this schema is often utilized in the clinic as well. Bevacizumab has been utilized in both the recurrent and upfront setting with varying results. The initial studies in 2009 for patients with recurrent glioblastoma suggested that there was progression-free survival benefit, which may translate to improvement in quality of life. Data presented at the recent Society for Neuro-Oncology meeting demonstrated a failure of bevacizumab to improve survival in combination with CCNU or lomustine, a alkylating agent, compared with that alkylating agent, CCNU, alone, despite an improvement in progression-free survival. Once radiotherapy and bevacizumab have been, um, been trialed, and, they, and have been proved to not be effective, we have a few other options left. And the FDA approved options include the nitrosoureas, such as BCNU or CCNU. Um, back when I was at Cleveland Clinic, we had some success with Tarceva as another agent, but really what we try to look for uh, when a patient has recurrent disease is to try and get them in a clinical trial either within our own group or with some of our collaborating institutions nearby in Phil Philadelphia and New York if it's a trial we don't have available. Because unfortunately, there's not terribly many things that seem to work well with recurrent glioblastoma. Again, if the patient hasn't been using Optune, uh, I reopen that discussion with the patient because we do know that Optune does have efficacy in recurrent glioblastoma. Um, but there's still uh, some resistance among some oncologists and some patients to using this device um, because of I, on the oncologist side, it's usually uh, that the oncologist doesn't yet believe that this mechanism is a mechanism that works. And there's still a bit of resistance out there, as I had many years ago. Um, and then the other resistance you sometimes get is from patients and families. So if the patient resists, it's not worth using the Optune device. The other thing that our team finds very important is the patient needs to have a good family network. Because if the patient has a good support group, it's much easier for them to be compliant. If they are compliant with the device, they tend to have a better result. Uh, once a patient becomes non-compliant as wearing the device only 50 or 60 percent of the time, it probably has very little efficacy.